carpet is always a tough problem. People spend a lot of money on carpet. You walk into a home like this and there isn't a piece left anywhere that isn't totally saturated with flood water. Many of us in the past have had to deal with flooded basements and people realize that, you know, it is possible to clean up some carpets, but flooded groundwater is very, very different than this type of circumstance where you have all of the raw sewage and everything else that's in the flood water. For the most part, in a flooded home like this, the carpet should just be discarded. There should be no attempt to salvage it. One of the situations with drapes is you almost have to play it by ear on almost every situation. These folks have moved their, lifted their drapes up, and I don't believe this has actually been in the flood water. And this type of a curtain would be something that was uh, cleanable in the washing machine to start with. Many drapes would have been ones that had to be dry cleaned, and sometimes the drape will actually get wet. But in this circumstance where it doesn't appear that it's wet, it just is hanging here. It's got a lot of odor in it from the odors that are in the room and in the space. But I'm sure it could be cleaned in a washing machine with the procedures we're recommending for cleaning any uh, machine washable fabric. In this room, there's obviously some vertical panels, window treatments that have not been in the flood itself. And that will often be the case. But as they stay here over the time it takes to get the insurance adjuster here and before they can actually start cleanup, mildew and all of the various other uh, contaminants will start affecting some of these products. And there are many things in a home that will require dry cleaning. Now, obviously, if it's flood soaked, if it's down on the floor and it's soaked with water, it probably is already ruined if it's a dry cleanable only product. However, uh, there are drapes, many drapes that do have to be dry cleaned and it may just be some water spotting on the lower edge or they still may look relatively clean but they're starting to be affected by mildew and eventually will need a dry cleaning. It's very, very important that everything be dry before you take it to the dry cleaner. They cannot put wet products into their machines without totally disrupting the humidity level. So you do need to get them dried out and then take them for the dry cleaning process. Dry cleaning is effective at sanitizing and cleaning. So basically, if it's a dry cleanable product and it's not already ruined because it's flood soaked, that is a good alternative on getting some of these materials cleaned up. Okay, now we're in the basement and with all of the many things that we're finding down here upset and in the heaps, here is a upholstered uh, couch of some sort now, this particular piece doesn't have any exposed wood, but many times when a family comes back in and they find the favorite old family chair that is an upholstered chair that has nice cherry wood arms and so on, the first question is, is it salvageable? Something like this, probably they would want to just get rid of. But if this were a keepsake family piece or a very, um, well-made piece of furniture, it might be worth to try to salvage. On an upholstered furniture, what they need to do is to get it into a dry space. If it's not raining to the out of doors, they should never leave a wood item sitting in the sun for a long period of time, but for a short period, that's fine. It'll help to dry it out. Then they need to strip it of all of the upholstery, of all of the stuffings, anything that is textile type of fabrications, the backing, uh, the underneath part, uh, all of this, just get rid of it. And after it's stripped down to the frame, then send it and dried out and the wood cleaned up with a uh, uh, substance, uh, a wood soap or a, a um, cleaning compound that will clean up the wood. The rust is taken off of any moving parts and cleaned up. Then it could be sent to have it reupholstered and recushioned. And obviously to go to that kind of trouble and that kind of expense, it probably needs to be an item that for some reason or another, you really don't want to part with it. Otherwise, for upholstered furniture, it's probably best to discard it. Another item that we're finding a lot of down here are children's toys, and children never like to part with their toys. It's very tempting to want to clean those up. Uh, a lot of toys are hard plastics at this point, and it depends upon what material they're made from, whether they will survive the disinfecting process, but never, never just hose off a toy and let a child have it back unless you're 
totally sure that you have disinfected all of the surfaces, the cracks and the crevices, and there's no question about it. Okay, this uh, defreeze, just like many appliances, is probably best to do something other than try to reuse the same deep freeze. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about on this tape, Deanna, is disinfecting, sanitizing. What's the difference? Well, first of all, I think that people need to realize that when you use some of these products in a laundry circumstance, that they may not be disinfecting. Products that they may think will disinfect because they know them to be a disinfectant on hard surfaces. The only way a person can be sure that they're getting a disinfectant that will work in a laundry circumstance is if that product is carrying an EPA registration number and there are directions on the container that indicate that it is a disinfectant in a laundry circumstance. Chlorine bleach is a disinfectant. Being a disinfectant means it basically kills all harmful bacteria. But there are a lot of other laundry products and laundry aids out there that do uh, sanitizing will be the term that's often used and will remove some of the bacteria but not necessarily kill all of the harmful bacteria. And that's something that I think people do need to pay attention to when they're cleaning up these uh, soft materials. <laughs>